Welcome. So this session is presented by three uh, Township University FACET fellows, um, Cody Sandifer, Kelly Elkins, and my name is Louis Singelke. I'm a professor of music. Cody's the lead, but he asked me to speak first because of um, the arts are going to come first in, in the presentation. And the um, name of the presentation is Harnessing AI for Student Success, Creating AI-Infused Course Assignments in the Arts and Sciences. We'll go on to the next slide, please. And um, we're going to discuss a few of the ethical um, considerations for AI, examples of AI assignments for music composition, or actually more performance, chemistry, ethics writing, and other content areas. And we're going to present some conclusions and lessons we've learned working in classes ourselves and as uh, leaders in our university through facet um, scholars and fellows. Um, Cody, why don't you get back to that slide? We can go ahead and go to my um, first slide. And you may not be involved in the arts, but you may wonder why you should know the arts in AI. And one, I'm going to give you two reasons. The first one is that it provides some historical concept context. And um, you may be very surprised that the first composition generated for traditional instruments by AI was actually in 1956. And this was Lohan Iller's Iliac Suite for String Quartet in um was written with um with work in the university of illinois we're going to play a short 30 second example for you It's about a 20 minute composition. And you might think, wow, that sounds like a computer wrote it, but there were composers writing in that style during that time period. And by 1980s, um, the um, computer programming composer named David Cope had worked with experimental musical intelligence and computers could analyze the works of Bach and Mozart and create new works in their style. So that was generative AI. We'll go ahead and go to the next slide, please. The second reason you might want to know about the arts is um, legal precedent. And February 12th, 2012, um, this painting was generated by AI, and Stephen Thaler tried to copyright it. It was denied. We can go on to the next slide. And the reason was um, there has to be a human authorship requirement. And in uh, 2023, the Copyright Office said copyright can only be copyright can only protect material that is the product of human creativity. Most fundamentally, the term author, which is used in both the Constitution and in the Copyright Act, excludes non-humans. Other countries, such as China, have allowed this, and there might be changes. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. I'll skip over this in the interest of time because you want to get into the interest to the um, assignments but you can see some of the um, comments from the Supreme Court. So today we're gonna to focus on three product applications for AI. And the first one is creating a video with AI images for fixed media work or other music. And I'll focus on that one. Two is to practice or perform with an AI music visualizer. Maybe you've all seen iTunes when you play music and they can produce different images. And there are many, many visualizers. I've got all these links at the end of the presentation, which we won't address today, but you can see later. Um, and then third one is to improvise over an AI soundscape. So AI will produce things like a stream, thunder, other types of sounds, and a um, performer can improvise over those. Um, I will tell you just briefly that I thought the AI images were really going to be the most interesting for my students, and we'll see some ethical considerations, but uh, they actually found the other two more interesting. Um, I'm going to show you a, a brief video. This is a composition that I wrote maybe three or four years ago, and I used AI images to de-enhance um, and the work. So you can hear that real quickly.
anyway, I find that interesting because the the work, the music, it refers to a dystopian future. So having the, the um, AI generate this the dystopian future was kind of interesting to me. We got one more slide for the arts, and then I'll turn over to my colleagues. Oh, two more slides. So just briefly, some of the goals in the assignment with the video was to describe music with words to assist in the interpretation and stylistic elements. I had a grad student. He did all this with his elementary school. They did the pictures and the, and the images. Um, two, utilize these words to generate images that inform as above and support imagination. Reproduce and enhance performance with video as well as audio. I play many symphony concerts, raw concerts. You see them in words of experience. We can do this with individual students as well. And finally, learn principles of AI. And I just wanna, in the final slide coming up, I just wanna address some ethical considerations. And this is an actual email that I received from a student. I've been thinking, and I'm not really entirely comfortable using AI images for my performance. While I think it's a cool idea, I have concerns with AI images, image generators, both in concept and with how the machines are trained. And I can elaborate on that if you want, and so on. Anyway, actually, I was surprised many of my students thought that. And the response was that they I gave them an alternate assignment, which to, was to use photos that were in shareware sites. So the assignment can be done in another way. And I really respected that they came to me and, and had these ideas. So anyway, thank you very much. I'll turn it over to my colleagues. Thanks. It's really hard to to follow these guys, but I'm glad I'm sandwiched in the middle. So I am a chemist by training, a biochemist, and I teach forensic science. But right now, I'm also teached with uh, tasked with teaching a course on ethics for um, a professional ethics course for scientists taught in the chemistry department, and it's a core nine course, which at Towson University is an advanced writing course, and so. Um, the because the focus of the course being on writing, uh, there are six writing assignments and I've listed them here, starting out from a short about me icebreaker to a final 10 page social justice um, with a chemical chemical toxin, some sort of um, event uh, being the centerpiece of that work. So for the second essay that they wrote this year, I decided to make the focus AI and plagiarism. And you can see that I venture into all sorts of other um, uh, kind of areas uh, of science where we can have ethical discussions as well. But I wanted to dive into this. Uh, next slide. So the, the prompt uh, or the assignment for the students was to test an AI tool. And uh, like Luis, some of them had um, minimal or no experience with these tools and they were surprised I was telling them to test an AI tool. And so we went over this in class and then I showed them what they could do and um, about prompting and I told them to test an AI tool. And then we were um, discussing and I was teaching about codes of conduct uh, for ethical practices in the sciences. And we were talking about different codes from different societies as well as the Talisman University code of conduct and specifically the definition of plagiarism since this is important in scientific writings um, and authorship. And so I had them write a short paper uh, comparing and contrasting uh, the AI tool and the concept of text generation and plagiarism. And I, I was really interested to see uh, what they wrote. And of course, part of the, what they're graded on is grammar and spelling and uh, writing um, in a um, cohesive uh, a way. Um, but basically I wanted them to examine what's an ethical use of AI and what's not. So uh, this is what I learned. Um, basically it, it was really interesting um, for them to reflect. Um, and we had talked about the fact that AI hallucinates and we've seen lots of um, uh, reports of that and the risk of plagiarism uh, because it lacks citations. And we talked about um, ideas of how to use this tool as well. So like for brainstorming or generating ideas. So they wrote about those kinds of things. Like it's okay to use this to brainstorm or generate ideas. It's okay if the professor instructed us to use this. Um, so to Luis's point, you know, some of the students still may not feel comfortable, but you know, my students wrote, it's okay because she told us to do this. Um, 
And it was really interesting, some of the other things that they wrote, um, the AI needs to be used uh, wisely and with caution. Um, the tool can help search for sources. That's not plagiarism. And um, AI can be used to spell check work, such as, you know, the AI tool Grammarly. That's not plagiarism. Uh, AI can um, be used to, um, you know, generate ideas, help outline a text. Um, they actually noted that plagiarism detectors are often AI tools. That was interesting that they picked up on that. Um, and that uh, chat GPT um, or these tools are not neutral. And uh, there was a previous session this morning by uh, Sam and Trish talking about ethics and bias and that there can be bias from the training sets. Um, and that um, finally the uh, one of the most controversial thing was, you know, whether the use of the AI tool was plagiarism. And um, the consensus is, well, you know, just using this uh, to do something uh, that uh, as, as long as you're not uh, needing to cite a source, then that's acceptable. But submitting the work as your own um, generated with that tool would be uh, an infraction. And um, one, one student wrote about how AI is a gateway to academic dishonesty. So these are some things that the th students are thinking about, and I will stop here. All right. Uh, thanks, Kelly. So I'll jump in. One of the things we did at FACET at Towson was uh, we realized that there's still a lot of faculty who don't have a lot of AI experience. So what we did, this is just an excerpt from that, we created a self-guided tour for these faculty where they could just kind of wander through AI. Uh, we engage them in 10 different tasks. So I'm now gonna show you a couple of examples of tasks for those faculty. They're all assignment related, which is the idea. We're integrating um, AI into assignments. There are lots of tasks that are not about that, but what I'm showing you is from that. Um, before I jump in, one thing that's important is that the AI, I think, can fulfill different roles. Most students, and I think a lot of faculty, think about it as a source of information. Although I will say up front that the most meaningful discussions I've had with my students are when it's wrong. <laughs> because whenever they submit information from AI, I always have them paste it into an assignment every time. So if I ever have students interact with an AI, they have to show me what the interaction looks like because then I can catch things that are incorrect and then we can talk about them in class. But it's not only a source of information anyway. There are lots of things you can do. You can treat an AI as a tutor. You can have it generate problems for you. Um, you can use it as an idea soundboard. Um, you can have it run interesting kind of educational related games for you, different scenarios, which are interesting. And you can also have students interact with an AI in a controlled environment. So I'm going to show you that now. In fact, I'm going to stop sharing. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to share something else. So there's a website called um, Magic School. And this is a place where students and faculty can go to actually arrange kind of a managed interaction with an AI. So this will take me just a second to bring up. But the idea is that the instructor, so this is the course instructor, goes up and they select modules. So these are different AI modules. So it'll look like this. This is what it looks like from the student perspective. So what the instructor's done is the instructor gone in, decide the modules they want people to see and want people to interact with. So it's things like you can interact with a famous person from history, you can get tutored on language, you can use it as a study bot. You can click on these individual modules and engage in an AI in a different way. And the reason that it's managed is because it generates an, um, a transcript that the instructor can look at later on. So you're not just sending them out to chat GPT and then wondering what kind of interaction they're having. You can actually see it here. Um, so again, this is a place to go, Magic School. I don't know if Alyssa uh, Harrington is here, but she's the one who spent a lot of time on this and kind of introduced us all to this. I'll stop sharing and I'm going to do one last thing, which is extremely unwise, which is I'm going to bring up Copilot really quick. I'm going to share that screen and I'm just going to paste a prompt into it. And this is one of the ones I mentioned before. This is about using the AI as a game master. So what I've done is I have, um, I've asked it to generate something for me related to um, like a choose your own adventure. And this is about the Galapagos Islands. So this would be something that would be related to um, biology. So let's set this up. And you're gonna see me then paste in a prompt. Um, I should, I know my time's almost out, but it's something about prompt is this is like version 17,000 of this prompt. So the other 16,000 like were okay, but they were not great. So I just gonna put in a prompt as a choose your own adventure. And it's, um, so this is, we are now we're embarking on a Galapagos adventure. 
I've encountered a blue-footed booby, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on, right? It's a bird. And so it gives me different options. I can observe and record it. I can approach it cautiously, or I can sketch it. And the only reason I'm showing this to you is, again, you do not have to just treat an AI as a source of information. You can interact it with a tutor. You can have it guide you through an experience. So I'll stop sharing this. And there are many ways that you can approach having students interact with AI that's not just looking something up. Um, so I think I'll end there because that's probably all the time that we have. Um, if you download this um, PowerPoint, the very last page is a resources slide. And so you'll have links to all the things that I put up. That would be the self-guided tour of these websites and many other things. So thank you. I'll turn it over to the moderator and uh, we can go wherever you like. Thank you, Cody. Uh, Lewis already asked, answered his question, but uh, there is one here. Do you have the students then do homework or classwork self-education to learn how to use these tools before you get to the next stage? The in go to magic case, AI for school AI, yeah, for example. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that everybody is kind of starting from ground zero in the way that I'm having them interact, right? I don't know that anybody's used it as a tutor. I don't know that there's anybody kind of developed these scenarios. I'll often have, um, I teach physics and physical science, so I'll have it generate questions, like problems for them to solve, and it'll give them hints. And part of the prompt is that they should not give away the answers. So I think you really need to build a lot into the prompts. That's the main thing, is I give my students the prompts that they're putting in. I'm not usually having them generated themselves. And that way I'm controlling the kind of interaction that they're gonna have, if that makes sense. It does. Uh, I had, I'm seeing another question about how do you, you're teaching at the undergraduate level? Because the question is for that. How do you uh, get students to understand that a lot of the uh, cheating they might be engaging in, if they are at all, involves their time management problem? And do you address that? Uh, as an issue in the class. Well, so I'll or speak just quickly this, for myself and let, and let other people jump in. I mean, the most important thing I can do is chunk assignments. So I can help students manage their time, right? So that's critical. If I'm giving a very long, whether it's a paper or a project, right? I have many steps and they have deadlines at various points. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to avoid a situation where they are doing everything at the end. So I think that's one way of doing it. And I'm also clarifying where they can use AI at each step, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's a step that they're not supposed to use an AI, they know that. Right. If there are steps that they're allowed to do it, that would be something I would make clear for them. But yeah, Kelly and uh, Luis, you may have something to add about the time management part. I think uh, everything I use in my online class where there's some writing is exactly what you're saying. Having steps along the way and being very clear about the assignments where they can and cannot do it. For me, it's they're allowed to do use it for editing purposes, um, but not in the generation of text. Not in the generation. Kelly? Um. Yeah, it does the same. Um, they can use it for brainstorming, uh, idea generation, but not to directly put the text in because then that's not authentically yours. And it may, uh, uh, so that, that violates the code because then they didn't do their own work. I wanted to put a plug in for Cody. He has a three page walkthrough about AI. He's put together for our center. He just did that this week. And then he also has probably, you know, eight more assignments that he's done and talked about at various venues at Towson. If anybody wants to invite him to talk about all those, he's got lots. He had to limit it to five minutes here. I love that. A uh, comment from Nancy O'Neill. I love the delineation of different roles that Gen AI can play in helping students think through, walk through a process of what is appropriate use in this or the context assignment. Uh, the question that followed up from Ram is, how do you get students not to deviate from provided prompts? Uh, that's a good question. Well, what, what's nice is with the magic school, again, they record the transcripts. So if that's where you're sending them, you can see what they've done. I don't think there's a way to monkey around with them as far as I know. You're getting their actual interaction. Um, and the fact that, again, every assignment that I do that requires a student interaction with AI, they have to copy and paste the output that I can look at it. That's not to say they couldn't edit it. But again, I'm looking at it, I'm having them interact in ways where they're not getting facts. So I'm not necessarily worried about them, you know, stealing information from the AI. I wanna see their interaction. So an example would be, I have students generate an idea, they have an AI generate an idea and they compare them. So I think they're less likely to kind of cheat that way if you wanna think about it, because right, you could have the AI do both. You could have it generate my idea and their idea. <laughs> but I think if you have them compare them, they're more likely to authentically kind of offer up what they're thinking. Especially, I'm not grading that on quality necessarily, right? It's just what they're thinking. Um, I'm sure, it has to follow rules, but I'm not evaluating whether or not it's correct, right? That comes at the end, I guess. Thank you so much, team. You've been fantastic. It is, however, time for us to move on. 
very much appreciate it. And I'm, we have posted how we can get in touch with you. So you may hear from many of us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being an excellent moderator. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thanks a lot. See you soon. commercial a general like either commercial or open source ai program to do uh, application to do that um uh, the risks of it just sort of making stuff up are, are is too high uh, but properly sandboxed properly sort of guided uh with the right really guideposts good. the the these systems can do that but like they kind of have to like they're not uh, as I'll talk about, like they're not fact machines. So oh, that's, that's not what they do. That's um, not what they do. Yeah. I was actually looking for something that wasn't an AI that would do that. Oh, um, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I use that, Google uh, search, but that, which seems to work pretty well. Yeah, I think the, 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 the trick is having a system that um, <clears throat> with access to you know, just all the stuff that gets published, which is, well, right. there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that gets published. Yeah. I sort of assume that Google probably has the biggest uh, of the public sort of databases. But I don't uh, know. Probably, I don't know. but probably, but it's a really good question. Yeah. How much would you be missing? Well, when you're trying to assess the validity of an undergraduate student's work, Probably safe. <clears throat> yeah, I would think so. Still, it's not exactly. Yeah, anyway. It's one of those things that, excuse me, may be working now, but you can sort of predict that it isn't going to continue to work. Because if there's a an impetus and a profit to be made, People will start putting fake things out on the out on the web so that we <clears throat> get false positives. Yeah. Or uh, as is the case, also we've seen academic, like literally journals that will publish papers that are definitely generated by generative mm -hmm. AI. Right. Like you can Google, you know. So like it's both ends of the both sides of that. Uh, there will be problems with. Well, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, we'll get underway in two minutes, uh, or at least by my clock, about two minutes. Uh, so welcome. And thank you to Mary for sort of playing uh, guide and shepherd for your questions and keeping me on track. <laughs> my apologies. We need to wait a moment or two because there's some oh, sure. mis mismaneuvering going on in the uh, breakout. <laughs> Hold on. Um, we have people two minutes, you're right. People walking out. <clears throat> uh, it's also sending people to the wrong place. Mm. That's not good. <clears throat> I have another breakout schedule than one, so I'm trying to cram lunch in the middle.
looks like we're under control. Okay. Uh, 